And it was also the transition time in his life where he was entering his full commitment to ministry, to do all that God had called him to do. It got kicked off right here. And as we look at his baptism, we read in this passage, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending on like a dove and lighting on him. In the Old Testament, you can see many times when a father would bless his son. And what that looked like was the father would take his right hand, and he would put his right hand on his son's head, and he would speak words right into the heart of his son. Words that his son would remember, that would tell him who he is, and what his life was to be characterized by. We can see Jacob doing this in the Old Testament, and several others as well. And here I want you to see a physical touch, as if God the Father reaches down and puts his right hand on his son's head. You saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove and lighting on him. It was a clear sign to everybody there that God's hand was on this one and that God had some important things to communicate about him and to him. So we can see this verbal affirmation from the Father, literally a voice from heaven that says, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Isn't that beautiful? And we see God blessing His Son. God the Father wanted Jesus, His Son, who was fully man, to know without a doubt exactly how God felt about Him. Exactly what He was to come back to in His heart. You are strong. You are good. You are my Son. I'm proud of you. I love you. And I believe these are the words that were written on Jesus' heart. That when he looked inside, who am I? Oh yeah. I'm God's son. And he loves me. Jesus had a clear and firm sense of identity. And that produced strength in him. That flowed out of him. Now in addition to Jesus' rock solid sense of identity... He also had a crystal clear mission that he had received from the Father. When we come back to our, our passage in Matthew 12, and this, this prophecy from Isaiah 42, we can see it in here. That God was saying, this one who will come, he will pro proclaim justice to the nations. He will lead justice to victory. And in his name, the nations will put their hope. Jesus' mission was to bring justice. Justice is when sin is dealt with. Is that right? Jesus came to bring justice to the earth. Now there's a really far-reaching, permanent sense of that. We can see it in Revelation chapter 20, at the great white throne judgment, where Jesus is sitting on this throne in all of his glory, and he's pronouncing final judgment on everybody on earth. The judgment that will stand for eternity. And yet there was a different sense in which he was living this out in his time on earth before. There was a sense in which, uh, if I asked you, why did Jesus come to earth? As Isaac asked you in, in his sermon a couple weeks ago, uh, many of you said he came to earth um, like Matt, Mark 10. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life. Is a ransom for many. Jesus Christ came to die on the cross. And I struggled a little bit with that. How does dying on the cross proclaim justice to the nations? Was it just and right for Jesus to be murdered? He hadn't done anything wrong at all. How does that put God's justice on display? I think the key to unlocking that idea is to look into Romans chapter 3. And Paul addresses this in two verses. And he 
tells us that God presented Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. A sacrifice of atonement when he's going to take the penalty for your sins. Throughout the generations, animals had been sacrificed to make atonement. That they took the penalty from your sin. Uh, but as we read on, God did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did so to did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus Christ. You see, Abraham and all of the other Old Testament saints, when they had offered a sacrifice for their sins, it was just a sign. It didn't really fully pay the penalty for their sins. It had, it, had, uh, it had demonstrated that their sins were going to be taken care of, but they were just set aside. And by faith, God forgave their sins, and God placed upon them the righteousness of Christ. But Jesus had to come and die on the cross so that all those sins that God had patiently allowed to rest unpunished could be punished on the Son, Jesus Christ. And at the same time, your sins and mine were also being laid upon him. So that you and I, just by trusting Jesus, putting our faith in him, could be truly forgiven right down to the deepest level of our soul. All the sin completely gone and paid for. There's a principle that you see many times in the Bible that says every sin must be punished. And in dying on the cross, Jesus made it just for God to accept you. Nobody could say, yeah, but God, you haven't really dealt with their sins. Whereas that unbeliever has to deal with his own. God can say, no, every sin has been punished. And it's right. It's just for God to embrace you when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And so Jesus knew his destiny. He knew that, that he had come to die, to make a way of salvation. And he never lost sight of that purpose for his life. Many times in the Gospels you can see how people came to Christ and they tried to sway him and get him off to do their purposes. Some came and said, Jesus, Rome is occupying Israel. Look, there's Roman soldiers everywhere. We are not free. If you're the Messiah, if you're our king, overthrow Rome. Jesus never batted an eye at that. He had a much greater purpose coming to earth. There were people that came and, and tried to sway him to do miracles or to come and and just spend time with his family or whatever it was. But Jesus first always had his priorities straight and focused on his mission. And so where did Jesus' strength come from as a man, as a godly man? It came from his rock-solid sense of identity as God's accepted son. And it also came from his clear sense of mission that he lived by every day. And those are the things that, that help shape Jesus' character. So as we look at the character of Jesus Christ, when we look back into our passage, we see several things that give us a picture of, of how he carried himself, how he related to people. How did he communicate? If you notice the highlighting section, aware of the fact that the, the Pharisees wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and kill him, Jesus withdrew from that place. See, Jesus had nothing to prove to these Pharisees. A lot of us in his position would want to either stand there and fight because we would want to prove who we are to them. Jesus knew who he was. And he was confident in that. He had nothing to prove to these guys who opposed him. So he could withdraw, stay focused on his mission, Enjoy his identity and continue doing the things God wanted him to do. 